we're going to look at um, Venus in Scorpio in the eighth house. So if you have a birth chart and you look at your birth chart, what you're going to do, and I'm going to explain this as I go through, you're going to look at what house your Venus is in and you're going to look at um, what signs. So clearly if your Venus in Scorpio, this is the video for you. If not, I've got the previous videos from Aries right through to Libra and the seventh house and now we're doing the eighth house. So here we go, next slide. So what I'm gonna do is explain that Venus um, has an inner nature and an outer nature. So, and it's the way in which we hear our own voice. And what that means is, is that it's also the way we listen to ourselves. It's our inner monologue, like that voice that tells us who we are and what we are. And as we hear ourselves and our inner talk, we can see often, you know, it's not 100%, but very often we will basically project that out into the world, that inner voice, how we're feeling, and that generally gets reflected back to us. But I would very much say that as an adult, you know, maybe in later years of childhood, but very early you know, clearly we need to be looked after. So we're not going to give little babies a hard time here with this, you know, the idea of projection um, because it's important that we don't bypass reality in whatever modality or whatever we like in life. We can't just write people off and say that everything that happens is a projection because it is not. Um, there are things that happen that are difficult and sometimes the way we speak to ourselves is our true feelings also. But ultimately, it is our inner needs and values, and Pluto rules Scorpio and the eighth house, okay? And then, so how do I talk to myself? So when we begin to explore this, and we begin to explore our chart, we'll be able to see, not just with Venus, but in other ways, and our own disposition and how that's affecting us in our lives, so that we can begin to evolve. And we can also do this through, you know, various studies, like I look at Carl Gustav Jung's work, and also I like psychology, so I sort of integrate, you know, I'm not a psychologist, but I integrate all of my learnings and my wisdom and I put them together. And evolutionary astrology works well for me on the basis of um, the information and how helpful it is. So we need to look at how, do, at how do I talk to myself and begin to observe and get rid of the inner critic that's, you know, can annihilate us. So here we have um, my birth chart, and this is dated, the chart is dated the 23rd of August. And what you've got here is, if you look at my pointer, you'll see that I've got Venus, my Venus is in Aries. And my Venus is, because it's in the fifth house, I would also look at Leo as well, because I'm going to have, you know, be looking at Leo, because it's the fifth house, and then also my Venus is in Aries, so I would look at Venus in Aries. And that's what I meant when you look at two, you know, you, you were basically bringing the chart together. So we're not just looking at one thing. We're looking at many different facets of a chart. And the, if you don't know astrology, the small green symbols on the outside, they are transits where the planets are or where they were at on the 23rd of August. This year just gone. So a natal chart, it represents our potential and it also represents what we have, where we have been, what we have been and where we are at and what we can become. And we do have free will and knowing this means that we get to make choices. It's very important that we understand this in astrology. You know, the natal chart is a snapshot of the heavens at birth and it's not where we're stuck like in stone. And we, we get to evolve and clearly the more wisdom we have and the more we know ourselves, the greater we degree we get to objectify and evolve. And it also says it is important that we look at the totality of a chart and in evolutionary astrology, the baseline used will be Pluto and the North Node and the South Node. So again, you know, Pluto, you need to look at where that's in your chart and then your North Node defines this life path and the South Node past life. But we'll also look at the transits. We don't just look at the natal placements when we look at a chart. So here you go, Venus in Scorpio and the ruler, 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 ruler Pluto. So here we have a pattern and a need inwardly relating to their own soul and the deeper aspects of self through examining oneself and the depths of psychology, the understanding who I am, the ability to examine one's own nature and fears and what they desire and need. This helps them to decipher who they are and then how to relate to others. 
and each examination causes one to expand and then contract. Venus in Scorpio has inner depth with regard to self-knowledge and this expands outwardly in understanding the depth of others. And all situations are elevated at depth, their own inner world, and then in relationship to others. The main question is why. So, you know, Venus in Scorpio and Scorpio in general, the main question is why. And I know that I have that as a rising sign and I ask that question a lot, is that why? Um, this why leads to self-knowledge about self and leads to understanding the, the depths of others who we then interact with. And Jeff Wolf Green describes this state as having an eye of an eagle and explains an eagle's eye has the ability to see the larger picture and then telescopically zooming in on points of focus. And that's the reality of, you know, like an eagle that they, they have this eye, but they can zoom in like very quickly on what they're focusing on, their point of focus. And Scorpio does that, but Venus in Scorpio, this is what's going on. Inwardly, they are monitoring everything and the same applies to their surroundings and others. The why leads to understanding, but can feel threatening to others. So if you can imagine, if you're like basically questioning people, why, you know, why are you doing that? Why, why is that that way? It can feel threatening to other people. And um, Scorpio has experienced lives of abandonment, loss, and betrayal. And Venus in Scorpio can cause fears to manifest, and they zoom in to make sure all is safe and they are protected and this includes others they care for and part two of this is they do not wish to experience dependence on others in order to protect self this can create circumstances that create situations where others do abandon and betray them this can happen due to them becoming fixed, and if too fixed, growth cannot occur. Self-enforced or other removals also create growth. They may act with anger or rage or show a victim mentality. And if we become fixed or over-identify and it inhibits our growth, then it is necessary for removal of whatever is creating the stalemate. And that's worth thinking about you know, in life as well. They need others who assist them in understanding their own depth and needs and wishes and desires. They require proof and loyalty in order to let another in and open up to who they really are. If another is dependent on them, it can create a sense of safety and this can be a form of manipulation even if it is unconscious. Knowledge of self and knowing of self ultimately leads to healthy changes in time. To be vulnerable with another is the ultimate here as this allows for healing to occur. This can lead to trust and inner honesty that one's about one's own motivations and allowing one to grow and feel safe. We can balance this with the polarity of Taurus to look at our wounds and to see where we can heal ourselves and become self-sufficient. When we become self-sufficient and can love who we are, we speak to ourselves in a new way, which leads to others relating to us in healthier and more loving ways. Security is inner, and knowing this leads to self-empowerment and inner security. Okay, this I love. This is um, Uganda, and a saying I love. He says that mankind is engaged in an internal quest for that something else he hopes will bring him happiness complete and unending. For those individual souls who have sought and found God, the search is over. He is that something else. So what happens is, is that we, as we go through life, that we have this desire, you know, this desire to be fulfilled by something outside ourselves. You know, it can be a myriad of things. Um, you know, it could be a new job. It could be a partner. It could be, you know, having a baby. It could be anything that we think we need um, to bring us happiness. And we think it's going to be complete and unending, but then we realize it's not. So then we go back to self and we experience you know, delve in inwardly, and then we come to the idea of what God is. It, for each of us, it's very subjective. But I would say the experience to God is similar for all, I would say most people, all people in, the, you know, the loss, abandonments and betrayals lead us back to ourselves and to, to becoming whole. Here we have Carl Gustav Jung. He passed in 1961, and he's got a couple of sayings here that I love. He says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And what you resist not only persists, but it will grow in size. And I think with wisdom, you know, we begin to get through that, but we've got to remove um, a lot of what 
you know, causes us to disassociate in our lives to get to this point. Because if we're continuously disassociating, whether it be through childhood trauma or, you know, through the things that we do in day to day life, then we're not going to grow and our soul's going to sort of become stagnant and not really go anywhere. So that's where, you know, Pluto will come in and it will just, you know, it will just make things happen. You know, it's sort of like, like boom, it's like things will happen. So then we have to make changes, you know, we're forced into it. So resistance to change determines the magnitude of our problems or confrontations. And then the source material here is Jeff Wolf Green, Pluto One, Evolutionary Journey of the Soul. And Carl Gustav Jung, the various quotes, um, Yoganda, his quote, and a few pictures there from Google. And then what you can do is you can email me or look at the links below in the video. And please subscribe if you haven't seen me before because I'm doing regular videos and I'm going to be doing lives on, you know, sort of astrology learning and trauma and CPTSD, stuff like that. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I'll be back next week with, let me think, Scorpio. I should know this one. You'll have to go along with me. Um, Sagittarius, that's it. Yeah, Sagittarius, got it. So, and then after that, I'll go up to Pisces and then I'll start, you know, a new, a new section on maybe Mars or something like that through the houses. Okay, catch you later. Thanks for watching.